visiting Blenheim Palace was truly a highlight of our trip. Experiencing the grandeur and the architecture and the grounds felt like we had stepped into another reality, one of wealth, history, and royalty. So without further ado, welcome to Blenheim Palace. It's quite the entryway. It took a while before we noticed that this was actually wood, but I thought it was very creative how they made that. This was the only palace we went and saw on our trip. We didn't end up going to Buckingham Palace, but this one actually is bigger, we found out. They had a very nice gift shop and cafe there. They had a lot of cafes there. And a lot of archways. It was very different from the castle we had been to. They host events in this courtyard here. You can rent it out. The artwork was interesting. I don't know why there were eyes looking down at you at the entryway. But we were waiting outside because we had a tour waiting. Good morning, welcome to Blenheim Palace. For those of you who haven't been here, I'm just going to tell you literally in two sentences why Blenheim Palace is here and how it was built. It is still a family home. It belongs to the 12th Duke and Duchess of Marlborough, who's over in the private wing on that side. But it was built for the first Duke, John Churchill, and he won a very important battle, the Battle of Blenheim, in August 1704. As a reward, Queen Anne and the nation gave him two and a half thousand acres of oh royal land and 240,000 pounds, which in today's money is about 25 million pounds. Not bad for a day's work. <laughs> With that money, he had Blenheim Palace built. They started building on that side in 1705. <laughs> 28 years later they finished on the far side and what you see is what was built at the time. That first one probably had the tallest ceiling. Of the part we were allowed to go into. It was a self-guided tour. Yes. I like these curtains. It's kind of a cool drape. Also I felt like we had to whisper everywhere we went. I don't think I'd want this many busts in my house. It'd creep me out. Why does that look like chocolate? It's a seawall. To prove that the queen is So the whole thing was kind of set up like a museum. Yeah. And they had lots of different historical artwork and books and such. And they even had the blueprint, which I thought was really cool. And of course they had the room he was born in. The portraits of him were painted by other people but all the other paintings were done by him. At least in that room. So I found this fascinating. All these little toy soldiers. And the fact that they were just given as a gift to the 11th Duke of Marlborough, I believe. But it was like a Christmas gift. And I'm like, that is such a cool toy to have, especially back in the day. I bet they had got a lot of enjoyment out of it. This is the other side of that grand opening. There's a lot of antiques as well. It is interesting that the Marlboro family still live here. Yes, and I believe they were home that day. Oh, and then I found all these little decorative mice placed throughout the palace, which apparently they put there just to entertain the kids. This was the dining room, and apparently the family still has like Christmas dinners here. But that's about it. Most of the time it just lays empty, other than tourists. This room felt different. <laughs> I love this dress. I want one. I believe these were on loan from a movie set. But they fit in well with the rest of the decor. The whole museum was really well done in the way they presented everything. This was probably our favorite room. It felt like a library on one side, but the rest of it felt more like a ballroom. But there was so much to see in one room. All the little carvings on the ceiling and the walls. Had a great view of the outside too. And of course I found some more mice. 
Oh, and Ethan had to wear his backpack backwards. That was like a requirement as soon as you entered. Yeah, they said uh, so you don't knock stuff over, which makes total sense. Yeah. And it wasn't until we walked to this inn that we realized that was actually an organ. Is it just me or do those cameras look like smiley faces? It was a very cool organ. Very light colored. Everything was very light colored. But there was so much detail in every little section. And then this is their own private chapel that the family has. Which felt relatively small compared to all the other rooms, but still for a private chapel it is massive. I also found that this whole chapel was mostly marble. Like the floors and the railings and the walls. There was a lot of marble incorporated throughout the whole thing. What's crazy to me is that this was built for only 240,000 pounds, but in today's money they uh, estimate with inflation that it's 17 million. That's for the whole palace, which is still a ton of money, but in the scheme of things for the amount of craftsmanship, I don't know if you could build this nowadays for 17 million pounds. Definitely not. More mice! And then the only bit of color you really see is on the crest. So it really stood out amongst everything else that was pretty light colored. Oh, and then this was the exhibition museum of Churchill. Now this definitely felt more museum than anything else. Yes, everything was a bit more modern. I loved how they had sayings of his all over the place. That's his hat? Yeah. It does look very small. They did have some history of the Marlboro family, but that's, you know, his family's heritage and lineage as well. I was really surprised by this because I didn't know that Churchill had long locks as a child. Very long hair. And the fact that they actually have some of his hair was crazy to me. I mean, parents do that, but it's it's kind of weird seeing it in the museum. Yes, and the fact that they parents did that back then, too. That's a legit saddle. That's a saddle? Yes, it is. Uh. And I had never seen a saddle like that before. But Churchill did love his horses. And I believe that was his actual watch. They had a lot of his personal possessions there. I love how they did the artwork in this room. You can hear the typewriter and the way the letters all floated up out of it was really cool. He had a lot of good quotes. This was the room where he did a lot of painting and reading. This garden was so pretty. The little tiny like hedge designs and then all the ponds. And then when we walked down a bit, uh, this particular section kind of reminded me of like Roman, Roman architecture. The way the statues were holding up the pillars or as the pillars. Yeah, the palace sits on 2,000 acres, so there's several lakes and ponds and just about everything you could imagine. This is a very famous part of the palace. There's been several movies that were filmed there. I'm waiting for like the Duke to come out and be like, get out! This particular garden was actually private just for the Duke. Mm -hmm. We followed some of the paths and started walking to the other gardens. Made sure we stopped and smelled the roses. We're in the secret garden of Blenheim Palace. It's not so secret though, they have signs pointing to it. Not much to see other than just like shrubbery and greenery. Uh, but it's really cool. Yeah, it's got a lot of little pathways you can walk through, it's really neat. This garden was my favorite. Mainly because it was an actual garden. Yeah, that was actually the gardener's house which was a pretty big house. And then the whole garden was walled off. I, I forget how tall it was. It was like eight foot, 10 foot tall. And the whole orchard, like these trees actually had some fruit on it. 
It seemed like a fully functioning garden. There was plenty of garden plots. When they had a greenhouse. Vegetable plots. And they had this whole section that was kind of geared more towards kids. That must be the exit. Do you know the way to figure out a maze? Do you follow one wall? There's only one way to go so far. Well, there's a couple here, but it's all very, it's a very forced maze. It's pretty obvious. I guess they don't want anybody getting lost. Oh, see, we split up with Ethan. Oh, we're losing him. This was so much fun. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect really from a, just a private little maze. Oh. And I don't think I'd ever really done a maze like this before. So it was a fun surprise that we got to do. And it was actually quite difficult. Like it was a legit maze, like you could get lost there. Even though it didn't seem very big, it went on for a while. But we found our way around. The design was really cool. Almost there. Uh, yours looks like it goes a little bit further. Uh, oh, wait a minute. We just came this way. <laughs> How do you get over there? <laughs> you just keep walking. You just yeah, keep, keep walking way. it. <laughs> uh, we just made our way out. It's been three weeks. So, <laughs> so you guys could have turned that way and come right over here. But instead you went inward. Hi. I feel like I'm going to make it out before Ethan. It's a dead end. Just following the wall. Eventually I will get out. At this point I thought, I think I went in circles. Or came out on the other side. I'm not even sure. Hi, hi, hi what's going on over that way? Well, we're <laughs> just uh, going to the center. Oh, can you do that? Yeah, because we know how to navigate. Uh-huh. Lenum. I forget why we split up, but we were like gonna race to try to beat you to get out. Yeah. Which I didn't realize that was the exit. I win. That's weirdly fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we did come back out almost the way we came in. Yes, but it is a when different we... direction. I also loved how the roses were growing on the side of this fence. I had to stop and smell them several times. And at this point we wanted to walk the rest of the grounds. We saw some cool trees. You know you're balling when you have your own private train. <laughs> A cute little train at that. Hello. I think this is the first time I've ever seen a pheasant. Now we made it to the other side of the palace. That was actually a little island in the middle of that pond. Ah, yes. And then we had to go see the Harry Potter tree. It's not not the Whomping Willow. But it was another tree that was in the movies. It's a big old tree. So after that we drove into Bladden so we could see where Churchill was actually buried. So after a short drive and a short walk, we made it to the churchyard. I think it's only about 10 minutes away from the palace. It was interesting to see. It's kind of cool. It was, it was buried really close to the when he was born. Hey everyone, so we never we didn't go to Buckingham Palace. Yeah. So as a second best option, we are at Blenheim. Blenheim Palace. And it is absolutely beautiful. The house was amazing. The history here, especially with Winston Churchill obviously, yeah. was fantastic. Uh, the fact that this is a privately owned uh, a state is amazing. This is truly one of a kind place. Well, probably not truly one of a <laughs> kind, but to us it was. There's like lakes, 2,000 acres, a huge home, gardens. Just everything is here. The scenery is awesome. So yeah. definitely enjoying it and glad we can make Yeah, me too.